Good Sunday morning. How's it going? Uriel came joining you. How's it going, guys? I'm not naked. Don't worry. I don't have my shirt on, but I just I had uh, we took the took the dogs and the kids for a mecca walk. I, I don't know if I've ever used the word mecca walk, mega walk, and it's like 35 degrees out Celsius with humidity at whatever time it is, 10:30 in the morning. It's amazing. So I wanted to share with you. Uh, so I'm kind of just really kind of like cooling down a little bit here. I wanted to share with you the secret to eating clean, eating healthy all week long. I'm going to share some uh, some kind of show and tell stuff with you as well, stuff that I use to uh, plan my week, and these are things that you can use as well. So before we get started, let me know if my connection's okay. Let me know where you're joining me from. Just pop into the comments. Let me know where you are in the world. I'm just going to grab my my drink, my green juice. So this is my shirt, it's like drenched. I could literally wring it out. And yeah, so I'm not wearing that right now. But the kids are chilling out, so I figured I'll take a couple moments to sneak away and do a little Periscope video with you guys. Welcome from Atlanta, Medina. We got some Toronto action. Yes, Peterborough, nice. Out back uh, close to the old Port Perry where I used to live. Nice to have you join us. Okay, so we're gonna be talking about how to, the secret to really eating clean all week long. And I'm gonna show you some really cool stuff to help you do that. Okay, so um, first off, this is my green, <clears throat> my greens drink. It's water and my energy greens powder. I'm having this after. I just wanna share something with you. Southern California, what is up? Okay, so here's a really cool fat burning trick. So I just went for a walk. We did five and a half kilometers. So that's about um, maybe almost four miles. And I was wearing a 50 pound weighted vest. Okay, so walking is just, it's like breathing. It doesn't really do much, right? But if you throw a 50 pound weighted vest, uh, a weighted vest on top, and you walk for several miles, it really starts to add up. And my legs, like they feel like strong tree trunks right now. But as I said, this, this shirt is drenched. And so it's a great way to stimulate fat loss. But here's the other thing is, and sometimes when you get a kind of a little bit more of an intense workout in the morning in a fasted state before you work out is prolong that fasted state so that your body is forced to use fat as its predominant fuel source. So that's a really cool, clever thing that I talk about in my upcoming book, The All Day Fat Burning Diet, is sometimes, in general, you want to get your kind of most, um, your biggest meal after a workout. That's when your muscles are more receptive to taking in all those nutrients. But there are times when it's actually from a fat loss perspective, really, really beneficial to not eat anything after your workouts. Again, if the goal is fat loss, you can do that occasionally because when you are in a fasted state and you've just revved up your body and you've kind of, um, you've elicited a, a number of kind of hormonal responses and physiological responses at the cellular level, you, those muscles, those cells require energy to, re to recover. And if you don't give food into your body at that point, your body is forced to tap into a lot of its fat stores as a fuel source. So what I'm doing now is post-workout, I literally have just uh, greens, which is zero calories pretty much, just really good micronutrients and water. So this is what I'm having right now. And I'll probably have a bigger brunch. My mom's coming over in about an hour or so. We'll have a bigger brunch then. So I'm spending two hours post-workout in a fasted state. That's that's what I'm doing. So, okay. Um, we're talking about how to eat clean, how to eat healthy for on, on a consistent basis. So let me ask you guys, how many of you guys have a challenge eating healthy consistently? And I'll raise my hand as well. Okay, I'm not perfect. Believe me, I don't pretend to be. But I do have some pretty cool tricks up my sleeve that can help you out. So let me know what is the biggest challenge you have with eating well consistently. Just let me know in the comments so I can best prepare what I want to share with you guys. Don't worry, I don't bite. Not hard at least. Kids leftovers. So what do you do with kids leftovers? Working all day. Yeah, so these are pretty very, very common. Yeah, so the the trouble is a lot of a lot of us rely on last minute willpower to figure out what to have for dinner, for instance, right? Yes, yeah, so you finish your kids' leftovers. So assuming that the food is good, then that should be okay. Um, the trouble is that 
we we tend to so here's the thing. So you have we have this thing called willpower, as you probably know, right? So it's like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna eat healthy, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna have this amazing dinner when I get home. I don't know what it is yet, but I'm gonna have an amazing dinner tonight. And then you go through your day, you you know, spend a lot of time working, your brain is doing its thing, you're resisting a lot of temptation, and there's stress. And all of that, what that does is it wears down your willpower, it wears down your battery life in your kind of internal iPhone, if you want to think of it that way. And there's been a lot of research that shows this, where the simple, like even there's a one study that had a group of people come into a room and there was a plate of cookies on the table and they had this, you know, this aroma of fresh baked cookies. And the one group was told they couldn't have a cookie, they could only have a radish, which was beside the cookies. And the other group was able to have a cookie. The group that had the radish, which now they were asked to do a, a, a psychological kind of task, a puzzle or kind of something like that, a problem solving task. The group that had the radish was basically deprived of something that they wanted. So they had to resist this urge of the cookie, had a far greater, so they had, it took them almost double the length of time to do that problem solving uh, task than the group that had the cookie. And that's because they were spending so much of their willpower on resisting temptation that they couldn't even focus on what they were doing. So willpower is one of those things where we want to really avoid using willpower to eat well or to exercise for that matter as well. So what I'm about to share with you is going to work for exercise as well. So if this makes sense to you, let's just, you know, tap, tap the screen, uh, just get some hearts going to let me know if I'm on track so far. And the thing with willpower is you want to set up your week in advance. Right? So you want to set up your environment to win, which means that, uh, thank you for the hearts guys, I appreciate that. Just keep them coming, keep them coming. If you're enjoying this, just, just keep your, just tap that damn screen like, a, like it's Morse code. The, the thing to remember is that you need to set up your environment to win. If your environment is set up properly, willpower doesn't even come into the equation. However, if your environment, as in your kitchen, for instance, has cookies and cupcakes and stuff like that sitting on the counter, it does not matter how well you are committed to eating, it's not gonna happen. So let's go through a couple things. And I wanna show, I'm gonna show you something here. That this is um, a worksheet that I use in parts from uh, one of the coaching groups I'm in called Strategic Coach, which is more of kind of an entrepreneurial, it's the highest level entrepreneurial coaching um, coaching group and what I love about this is that it just you know they, they, they provide so many great coaching and kind of thinking tools and this is a weekly planner that I use that I've actually worked from this to develop something even better for a lot of our entrepreneurial clients because I found that this is it's a good sheet but I, I don't even use half of this the bottom half is pretty much irrelevant to me the, but the reason I show this to you is because if I'm setting up my week for instance Right now, I'm setting up my, my week for work. So I have my quarterly goals, my quarterly objectives, and then I'll take out my weekly planning sheets to set up what I'm gonna do over the coming week. And you wanna do the same thing with your food. And the simplest thing to do is create a food journal. So you can type this out or you can just down, if you just type in food journal into Google and go to Google Images, and you'll see a ton of results. Just find one, click it, right click to download and print that off. It'll just give you Monday through Sunday, okay? And then breakfast, lunch, and dinner as a, just a very simple schema. And what you wanna do there is print that out on a Sunday or a Saturday, whatever's gonna work for you. And you wanna start filling those squares in before the week starts, right? So if you have cookbooks already, which we probably, do you have a cookbook? I'm, I'm, I probably guarantee that you have a cookbook in your house. If you don't, you can use my all-day energy diets, which I'll just show you. So this was my New York Times best-selling book, The All-Day Energy Diets, and this here it is in Polish. It's apparently it's big in Poland as well. And for instance, if you have this book, you'll know that we've got tons of amazing recipes in chapter somewhere, 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 somewhere. Uh, where'd you go? Uh, it's been a while since I've opened this book, apparently. Okay, so for instance, we've got... Anyways, you could take like recipes like this, right? It just 
Open up any diet book you have, any book, any cookbook you have. Open it up. Just randomly pick and choose recipes that you think you'll enjoy and put them into your, your planner. That's it. The easier way to do it is if, um, I don't know if you're part of our Fat Burning Meal Club where we basically give you a cookbook and a meal plan and grocery list every single month. So you don't have to think about anything. Because remember, the key is the more you think, the more you have to do the stuff, the less likely you are to succeed. That's why if you can do it in batches in one day, then you're going to be much better off. So find the recipes you enjoy. Put them into the calendar, into the schedule. For instance, on Monday for breakfast, I'm gonna have this smoothie. For lunch on Monday, I'm gonna have this. And know, like, just, you have a better sense of your schedule. So if you know you're gonna be at work, then, you know, making an elaborate lunch might not be the most realistic thing to do, right? So maybe lunchtime is leftovers from the day before. And then nighttime is where you're gonna say, okay, now I'm gonna have my, my more kind of, you know, full on meal. So it might be salmon with, salad and quinoa or whatever, whatever it is. But the thing is like, it doesn't matter what it is. The key is to write it down ahead of time in your planner, in your schedule. Because when you do that, you don't have to think. It's like, okay, Wednesday night, I'm having this for dinner. And then it's like, you, all you have to do is take out um, like this, right? Sticky notes. This is what I basically use every single day to write down my goals for the upcoming day is I write out my top three things that I'm gonna accomplish the next day, and you just do the same thing with a grocery list. So write down, okay, of these recipes, okay, here's what I need. I need uh, four eggs, I need a, whatever, a head of lettuce, a head of kale, three apples. Write down that grocery list and then go to the store and get all that stuff. Because once you have it in your fridge and most of that stuff will last for at least a week, then you don't have to worry during the week to actually do this stuff. And there's no last minute, what do we wanna have for dinner? Um, okay, let's just order it, right? And I'm, believe me, I'm guilty of this more than I want to be. And so you need to be, you need to be finding ways to, and especially if you're busy, if you've got kids, if you're working a lot, these are the things that will make a really big difference in your life. So the more planning, you know, there's in, in business, there's a common saying that for every hour of planning, you save like 10 hours of work or something like that. And it's so true. If I spend a good amount of time planning, systems, ideas, and I can coordinate that with my team ahead of time, it reduces last minute nonsense on my part. And that reduces stress in our company. It just makes us much more effective. And the same thing applies in all areas of your life. Okay, plan, sorry, fail to plan and you plan to fail. So what do you guys think of this? Is this something you're currently doing? Food planning, food journaling, Preparing yourself ahead of time. Do you have any questions about this that I can answer for you right now? And if you like this, then obviously hit some hearts. Hit tap the screen. I appreciate it. So I will just wait here on screen for your questions. I've said my piece on how to plan your meals. This, the, that's the secret, okay? The secret is planning. Planning and preparation. Fail to plan, plan to fail. And sit, like literally just sit down at your kitchen table on a Sunday, you know, Sunday morning, so you give yourself a bit of time during the day to get your stuff. Write up what you wanna have. If you wanna just do a basic Google search for recipes, you can do that. You can follow our stuff, obviously. You can grab any cookbook you already have, just randomly choose some recipes that you've enjoyed or tried or haven't tried that you wanna try, write them out, fill those things in, and there you go. Okay, so do you have advice for traveling salesmen? Uh, yeah, same idea. So you wanna to try to plan as much ahead of, as, as you can. Easier said than done, absolutely. I mean, again, I'm, I'm sharing stuff that is easier said than done, but here's the thing is, how, how difficult is it to sit down and plan the week, right? It's, it's really a choice. And if health is a priority, then all it takes is a decision. This could take you half an hour and then maybe an hour of shopping on a Sunday. And that's it, right? Um, I've got three kids right now. Amy is at the store getting a bunch of stuff for, uh, for our groceries for the week. And that's kind of just the way it goes, right? So you have to make it a priority. Otherwise, it's just never gonna happen, okay? 
So in terms of tra uh, traveling, if you're traveling domestically, so if you're within the U.S. and you're traveling domestically, you, there's a, a, I mean, you can pr pretty much do everything you want. You can cook all of your meals ahead of time, take them with you. If you're going across the border, obviously none of that can apply. So if you're within the U.S., then prepare your stuff ahead of time, okay? Prepare easy to enjoy snacks, whether that's fruits and veggies with hummus as a dip, or uh, you can, you know, make some chicken ahead of time. Do you have advice for families with little kids who are also picky? I hate making more than one meal. I do absolutely have very good advice for you is don't cater to them, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm like a, a friggin' food Nazi in our house sometimes. Not, not, this, not, not that I'm like, we do enjoy the occasional pizza and different things like that, but what I, what I mean by this is our kids eat what we make. We're not catering to them. Like, we're not saying, okay, Arlo, what do you want? Luca, what do you want? Oscar, what do you want? No, it's mommy and daddy are making this, and this is what we're having. And, I, I, you know, obviously we keep it healthy, relatively healthy, and you know, we'll try to cater it to them a little bit, so we're not going to eat salad all the time, although the more salad we've eaten, the more they tend to eat it. Here's another thing that I've really, <laughs> that I've noticed works really well with your kids. Don't even set the table for them. Set the table for you and your husband or you and your spouse and you eat the food yourselves because when you do that, your kids will come over and they'll be like, oh, I want that. So using kind of the psychology of takeaway and exclusion is pretty powerful. So sometimes we won't even tell the kids we're making anything for them. We'll just sit down at the table with our food and they'll be like, oh, I want some of that. And had we made it for them in the first place, they would be like, oh, I don't want that. And I really don't care. I mean, if our kids, if they say they don't want to have dinner, that's it. They're going to bed and they're not going to have any food. And the thing is, they're going to be fine. They're not going to die overnight because they did not eat. So you teach people how you want them to treat you. So with your kids, again, I'm not going to give parenting advice because everyone has their own way of doing things. But with our kids, I don't mess around with that kind of stuff. It's like, if you're not going to have the dinner that we just made for you, then you're going to bed without food and maybe next time you'll reconsider. So the only time we'll give, you know, we'll obviously give them some leniency is, you know, we'll get them involved in the food prep and that gives them a sense of ownership, which is great. And if they want to snack on things like fruit throughout the day, they can totally do that as well. So, but when it comes to meals, if they're picky, um, if they don't want to have, for instance, broccoli, if they don't want to have their greens, don't force it on them. You want to make it a pleasurable experience. Just ask them to try it and then make a decision. Say, hey, you know, have that piece of broccoli and then if you don't want it, that's okay. Um, but I think gone to the times where, you know, you have to finish your whole meal before leaving the table, that whole kind of depression era mentality where there's never enough food so you have to eat everything. I, I think that leads to very, very unhealthy uh, behavior with food. So, you know, if our kids, if they're having a, pl a plate of whatever it is and they don't eat all of it, that's just, whatever it is, they're done, right? Like listen to your body. If you're done, you don't want to have the meat, you don't want to have the veggies, whatever it is, then that's fine, right? You are making the decision or sort of the kids are making the decision in this case. And you know, there's a, there's a sense of ownership there. So that's, that's what I'd recommend. That's what we do at least. So, um, so going back just to the, the traveling thing that I, I think I almost finished, but I didn't quite is you can also look at some healthy snacks, right? So we have things like our, our energy greens powder, We've got our all-day energy bars. These are things that I travel with pretty much all the time because there's really no healthy options when you're driving on the interstate or flying. And uh, again, if I said, if, as I said before, if you're flying within or just traveling domestically, you can like you can prepare chicken ahead of time. You can cut it up. You can do all sorts of cool stuff. You can have all this stuff in Tupperware ready to take with you. Yes, it's a little bit more cumbersome. Yes, it's easier to go to a restaurant at an airport or just go to a restaurant off the interstate. Um, and I'm not saying that you, you can never do that because when I travel, I'm usually traveling international. So I rarely travel within Canada. So if I'm traveling US, Canada, US, I can't bring anything with me other than my greens powder and my all the energy bars. So the reality is that I'm usually not eating airport food. Uh, unless it's decent and all and you know for the most part it's not some I mean Toronto Pearson International Airport is actually really good There's some really good options there So you can get some good options But if for instance, I'm traveling to New York next week and I'm going to LaGuardia LaGuardia At least the terminal with Air Canada is one of the worst terminals I've ever been to Because there's nothing good like it's, it's like there's this um, pastry pretzel place 
they're allowed to sit at the newsstand, and that's it. So if you're there and stranded, you're kind of screwed. So you want to prepare as much as you can ahead of time. Take some healthy snacks, like go to a, you know go to a grocery store where you can get some bars or some some kind of you know in a container in a package type of food that's relatively healthy that you can kind of depend on if you're traveling international. If it's domestic, you can bring on fruit, all sorts of other stuff, and that's um, that's usually not a problem. So yeah, there we go. Any other questions that I can answer for you with respect to eating well on a consistent basis? And remember, I'm not saying you have to be perfect, right? Like it's all about progress and doing the best you can with what you have. And you know, that's a really big message that I really try to get across is like, I'm not perfect. You know, I definitely have times where, you know, we had friends over yesterday and we made this, I wish I had taken a picture, damn. We made some raw vegan sushi, which is amazing. It's so good. So here's how you do it. You take nori, right? The sheet of like the nori seaweed, that's your base as, as most uh, sushi is. The rice is cauliflower, so you put cauliflower in a food processor, you blend it up until it's almost, you know, like crumbly rice, and that's your base, that's your rice. And then you just put in some avocado, some mangoes, some sprouts if you want, some red peppers, any kind of veggies, and then you've got some tamari or light soy sauce, and that was our meal, that was, or you can also use pecans, uh, or like a walnut base instead of a cauliflower for your rice, and it's so good. Like our friends were just blown away. They're like, oh my God, this is so good. They had five kids and uh, they all loved it. But then they also brought cupcakes over. So we had cupcakes for dessert. Um, but again, I'm not, I'm just gonna enjoy that, right? So is it better to steam veg or juice them? It's, okay, so generally juicing is gonna give you the biggest bang for your buck in terms of nutrient quality. But we're not gonna have like a green juice on the side of the steak all the time. Like it just, so, Again, th there's, a, there's a balance between just enjoying food, having a nice meal, and even if the stuff is barbecued or steamed or boiled, just enjoy it. Like, just enjoy it. Don't worry about it. Was this baked or was it steamed? Who cares? Um, obviously, we're talking about things like french fries, baked versus fried is better, but for vegetables, you're gonna lose a little bit more when you're boiling them. You'll gain or you'll retain a little bit more nutrient quality when they're steamed. Uh, but again, just enjoy the food, right? Just be be with the food. If you're out for dinner and it's not the healthiest, just enjoy it. If it is healthy, but it's not up to standards of whatever, just enjoy it as well. It's not about being perfect. It's about just enjoying being present with the, with the food, with the process, and it's all good, right? I think the, the biggest problem we have as a culture, one of our biggest problems when it comes to food, is the shame and guilt that we experience because we're not perfect, whatever that means, right? We're not, if we're like, I remember when I was raw vegan for a number of months, several years ago, it was like, it was, it was just ridiculous. I mean, I can't, I can't live like that. You know, like I, I, I'm a, I consider myself a healthy foodie. I really enjoy good food. So if I go out for dinner and one of my favorite restaurants in Toronto is uh, on Ossington and you know, they've got an amazing steak tartare it's not gluten free, so they'll they'll have it on a little you know crostini type of bread, and I'm just gonna enjoy that because I get more pleasure out of that than avoiding it just because I don't I don't want to have gluten. So that's again that's a personal decision for me, even though I know and I and I and I I, I say pretty much in all my books that gluten pretty much should not be in our diets. There are times where you just want to have a sandwich, right? You just want to have a nice experience. Not that you can't have a nice experience without it, but if you're in a restaurant, again, this is up to you. If there, there are times where I go, where I go and I don't have bread, um, but it depends. You know, and that restaurant will have like a steak tartare, we'll have like little elk sliders, we'll have like a side of uh, local roasted veggies, a nice green salad, and I'm totally, totally content with that. So you just have to live life, right? Like do what's best for you, live life, feel, just kind of feel your way through it, right? Listen to your intuition, listen to your gut. That's it, yeah. Okay, any other questions guys before I go and prepare some brunch on this beautiful Sunday? So just to recap everything we talked about, the key, the secrets, so eating well consistently is planning ahead of time. Download a food journal, create your own, Monday through Sunday, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and snacks if you want. 
pre-populate that with whatever recipes you can find, whatever stuff you want to make, even if it's eggs and bacon or just a green smoothie. Put that in the plan ahead of time, stick it on your fridge, keep it visible, and get all that stuff ahead of time. Get the groceries ahead of time on a Sunday or a Saturday, ideally, whatever's gonna work for you. Um, if you need to prep stuff ahead of time, for some of your smoothies, you might be, depending on what's in them, is you can prepare these like smoothie bags or smoothie jars where you can cut up your veggies, cut up your fruit, put them in the jar, and then you just, when you're ready to go, throw them into the blender with the liquid, and done. Um, same with your salads, actually, when you're on the go. If you go to my blog, durielcame.com, one of the, I think our second last blog post was a salad in a mason jar. Check it out, it's a really cool way to take salad with you on the go, and it just gives you a really nice option to take you know, healthy eating stuff or you know, clean foods with you when you're at work uh, in a way that's convenient and portable. So yeah, so that's the key, guys. Um, it's all about planning. If you're traveling, planning ahead of time, taking stuff with you so that you don't rely on willpower, so you're not relying on you know crappy foods that are available in far too many places. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's finish off. Let's see how many hearts we can get on the screen. Let's see if we can fill this fat boy up. If you've enjoyed this information, thank you so much for joining me. Let's hit tap the screen. Let's get the hearts going. Show some love. If you want to follow me, and if you're not already, you can join me at the blog, yurielkame.com. You can find me on YouTube. I'm on Facebook and Instagram as well. Unfortunately, all of the ha all of the usernames, are all, they're all different. <laughs> like here, I'm Yelkame. On YouTube, I'm Yelkame1, I think. On Facebook, I'm yurielkame one I don't know why. I mean, it's just, I, it should have been a lot easier from the start to just make everything yurielkame. So let's keep those hearts pouring in, guys. Thank you so much. I will be back tomorrow with you. Actually, I have to apologize. I missed yesterday. I had a, I missed my daily Periscope session with you guys. So I'll be back tomorrow. We'll do some, um, I don't know, some cool stuff. What do you guys want to see me do? Maybe I'll do some workouts. Maybe uh, anything else you want to see me provide for you in these live Periscope hangouts. Let me know in the comments as the hearts keep coming flying in. Because again, I'm here to serve you. So whatever it is, however I can serve you is really the most important to me. We'll do some uh, some nighttime reading from some some, some of the, the chapters from my upcoming book, The All Day Fat Burning Diet, which is coming out December 22nd. If you want to pre-order your copy, you can do so at... And my kids are trying to break in. If you go to the blog, click on books at the top, you'll see the page, all the bonuses we're giving you when you pre-order your copy of the All Day Fat Burning Diet. Good foods for hormone balancing would be fabulous. Yeah, we'll talk about that. One sec, what's going on here, guys? Hey, you wanna say hi to the camera? Oh. All right, so this is Arlo. Can you wave to the camera? Can you say bye? Bye. Bye. This is our littlest one. How old are you now, buddy? A year and a half? He's a year and a half old. And the other two are back there watching one of their shows. So, all right. On that note, we will say farewell. Do you want to say bye, Arlo? Bye. Bye, Arlo. Bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for the love. Thanks for the hearts. Take action on planning your meals ahead of time, and I'll see you tomorrow.